papers have been published in. So it's a very, really, uh, I would say, a lazy way of uh, evaluating people. You can easily make come to decisions based on that. Uh, whereas if you actually have to read the papers, then it takes much more time. And uh, most people are not willing to think that much effort when they are you know, making hiring or promotion decisions. So therefore, this provides a very no. uh, uh, simple procedure, you know, even though it's flawed. You know, Mm. That's why what they have to do is you have to again that's why the whole section procedure has to be changed, you have to send the papers in advance, have it uh, you know, yeah. 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 And uh, you know, you have to again consider the value of impact of all research outputs, you know, I mean, in addition to research publication. And uh, so these are all important things uh, because since all of you are in uh, you know, senior administrative positions, it's important that maybe at least some change can be brought in the future, even though the situation now is not so good. So, and uh, you know, uh, oh, this I'll skip. So, okay, so I've told you about the pitfalls of impact factor. What is the reality? So there was a survey done among all the researchers how important they felt the impact factor was. And, uh, you know, at your institution or department, are metrics of scientific importance used to any degree in any of the following? Hiring decisions, tenure decisions, promotion decisions, salary, performance reviews. Everywhere you see that it does play a big role. So, unfortunately, that is the reality. You know, people use uh, these impact factor things even though they should not be used. So, the better metric, if you have to use the impact factor, the better metric is what is called the source normalized impact per paper, which corrects for differences in citation practices between different areas. Okay. So, this uh, allows for better comparisons between different areas. You know, suppose so here is an example, a nice example. Nature, if you just look at impact factor, its impact factor is 42. And annals of mathematics, which is a top mathematics journal, the impact factor is only three. Okay. So whatever, however the uh, mathematician may be getting a Fields medal because of this work, but still we will only be publishing an impact factor with the maximum of three. So if, however, if the source normalizes the impact, then nature comes down to 8.1 from 42, and annals goes up from 3 to 5.4. Now you see that they are roughly comparable. They are still not fully comparable, but they are roughly comparable. So therefore, you see that this normalization, in some sense, normalizes for every field and brings them all up to some relatively you know, equal field. Uh, so that's why if you have to use impact factor, it may be better to use this rather than uh, something else. So we use the multiplication of the two. Which multiplication of the two? and the impact factor. You use the multiplication of the two. It's depending. Okay. What is the exactly You just have to normalize it. Basically, it corrects for the area. Because in some areas have a lot of citations, some areas have less citations. So it basically corrects for every area. Makes a, so it's all available. It's all available in various contexts. Yeah, you, of course, normalization is more difficult for the individual to do, but these methods are all available in various, uh, you know, uh, insights and so on. So it's all available. So, so it may be better to use this in case you have to use it back. Uh, I said, but as I said, on the whole, I mean, everything, every metric has its flaws, but on the whole, the better metric is to use the citations per paper for you know, compared individuals. So here, you divide the number of citations by the number of papers that the individual has published. Okay. Uh, so you can do it for an institution also if you wish, but they, essentially it's the citations per paper. Uh, it's often good for individuals. And uh, it can be computed for researchers, institutions, etc. And again, it should be computed for each subject area separately. You should not compare across subject area, even this uh, metric. That holds for any metric that you have. 
then you cannot compare across uh, 